Folks, you know the U.S.-India relationship over the last few years have really taken turn for good. One of the most important people who helped with the help of the Indian American population is Sanjay Puri. He's the one, the organization U.S. Impact. That's the one you lead. And welcome to our studio, sir. Thank you so much, Umesh. Really appreciate it. Thank you for coming. You're always traveling between India and U.S., so I mm -hmm. need to ask you, have you seen what Obama government has done with Indian Americans? Yes, I have, and it's uh, really, really exciting uh, what he has done. It's, it's remarkable, remarkable. Mm -hmm. Some of the people that mm -hmm. got appointed, for instance, Anish Chopra, Vivek mm -hmm. Kundra, mm -hmm. Mr. Shah, who is the mm -hmm. agri-scientist, mm -hmm. Sonal Shah, mm -hmm. Do you know all of these people? I know a large number of these people, Preeta, Bansal, and a lot of the young people mm -hmm. out there, and it's, uh, it's fantastic. And they've been appointed because they happen to be the best and the brightest. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me a little bit about the elections in India. Mm -hmm. From your point of view, mm -hmm. folks, he's one guy who travels back and forth. He knows about the political situation in each country as well as the business, how it's done in each country. So tell me a little bit, reflect on the Indian elections. How does it affect us? Well, firstly, I think it's uh, remarkable when you see the region, what's happening in the region. You see what's happening in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Sri Lanka. You see what's happening in Bangladesh and uh, all that other region. And then you had this monumental election, 700 million people going to election in a peaceful electronic voting machines. Mm -hmm. And so firstly, what a remarkable demonstration of democracy. And people should understand that this is like India holding six Olympics at the same time because 700 million people being taken care of. So that has happened. But the good thing that has happened is now you have a stable government. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not a government that's being held hostage by many, many small players. So you're going to have consistent policies. And also it's a coming out party for young politicians. It's a young country. Yeah. What do you think of that? I, I think it's, it's fantastic because when you look at the average age of India, it's 27. But when people think of India, when they look at the politicians, it's, you know, people in their 70s and some in 80s. And, you know, uh, that's not the India. So now I think the politics is beginning to reflect the people. And I think that's incredible because you have people like Rahul Gandhi and many other people across different parties who are really coming to the fore. How is it going to change India? Well, how it's going to change India is, uh, again, time will tell, but I think you will have more consistent policy. Uh, yeah. What you saw even with the civil nuclear agreement was fits and starts, fits and starts. Yeah. I think now you have a government that can really create a certain policy and implement it, okay. whether it's in reforms in the business sector, privatization of public sector units. So all those things will happen. Whatever the policy is, mm -hmm. they can follow through. So you can at least invest knowing that uh, is this policy going to be implemented today, tomorrow. So that, I think, is uh, very important. You know, French and the Russians got the nuclear business. Mm -hmm. America is still is waiting for their turn. What is holding that up? Well, you know, there's a liability clause uh, that the Americans are waiting for Parliament in India to enact, uh -huh. and because of the elections uh, mm -hmm. that was getting held up. So now I think uh, with the Congress coming back to power with the UPA, I think that will happen, and then the American companies will go in and, you know, they have to have the best technology, the best price. They will get their share. You take a lot of delegations to mm -hmm. India, a lot of different business people. Tell me from your experience, is the progress been good or is doing business in India is pretty good? Where are we with this? I think the first fundamental thing is when you go to India, you've got to really leave all assumptions of doing business in America or other parts of the world behind. Mm -hmm. India is India. And it's a huge market, but they do things their way. Mm -hmm. And it works for them. The mm -hmm. country has grown at 8 9%, and it works for them. So what I have seen is, obviously, if you are looking at doing outsourcing or back office, there's no issue at all. You can get up and running in a month. It doesn't matter whether you're a two-person company or a 200-person company or a 2,000-person company. But if you have a larger project, then it sometimes makes more sense to have a local partner. We have seen slow but steady progress uh, mm -hmm. in India. And I think with this government, I think we'll see a lot more. But give me an example or two mm -hmm. that people can understand as to what the business is like. Again, like I said, if you're looking at uh, outsourcing, uh, despite what you hear, uh, and it, it doesn't matter what area you're looking at, whether it's legal outsourcing, financial outsourcing, clinical trials, IT outsourcing, India still has a tremendous talent. Okay. So whether you go to Pune, Bangalore, Delhi, wherever it is, I think uh, there's a huge opportunity there. 
you've got to also understand, India is now becoming a pretty large uh, market. Dell sold over a billion dollars worth of computers last year in India, a billion dollars. So that's now becoming a domestic large market. Right. And you just have to go to the McDonald's and others to see the consumers, the young population is starting to spend. So you have 370 million cell phones. Mm -hmm. You have two-thirds of the population below the age of 35. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you can generally figure out where you can. If you can do things that don't have too much government regulations, like mm -hmm. IT, technology, cell phones, mm -hmm. I think you're off to the races. You know, here in the marketing arena, they always say, we don't want to sell anybody over 54 because they never buy anything. They only save, save, save. It's the young ones, the 18 to 24 population that you want to sell. How is it in India? Are the young ones spending money or they have their father's habits of saving? I, the young ones are spending money because, you know, unlike uh, our generation, your generation, my generation, or others, when they come out, they have uh, multiple job offers despite the slump. So coming right out of college, they can make 30, 40, 50,000, uh, even one lakh rupees. So they have the money to spend. And I think that's what you're seeing the fuel in the real estate boom and others that has happened mm -hmm. is because these people are now spending, loans are available. So I think India is changing dramatically right in front of our eyes. Now, the communists were the ones that were holding back. They did not want to uh, be free with certain businesses, for instance, insurances and mm -hmm. the others. You think that will change? You think a different policy will come through? I think you're going to start seeing the uh, changes in the uh, FDI involvement in the financial sector. Mm -hmm. Insurance definitely is one sector that you will see uh, changes. Maybe it won't happen overnight, but they will start moving up the cap from 35% to much higher. You will start seeing some of the privatization of the PSUs, the public sector units, which mm -hmm. had been sick, but the uh, communists, because of their ideology, would not let that privatize. And you'll start seeing even retails and other stuff uh, starting to change because India needs to maintain a certain level of growth. It, if it doesn't maintain a minimum 6% uh, GDP growth, it cannot really bring its people out of poverty. Still, 70% of the people are living on $2 per day, and that is the other India that needs to become part of the same India. Now, tell me a little bit about uh, politics here. Mm -hmm. You have been... Uh, You've been a shaper of the politics in Washington, D.C. through your association of U.S. Impact. How many